On a previous video we looked at the NI440DX and I made a replacement power socket for it. Now what's very hard to come by with these radios is um, not obviously the power sockets when they break but also the plugs. This is the original plug that came supplied with the 440DX. It's a Japanese made item um, and they're almost impossible to get hold. Well you can't get these new anyway. And rather than sort of cannibalize a plug I wanted to make my own plug to fit. Um, so I found that, that using these microphone inserts from a, a standard mic plug on a CB make with the pins perfectly in these. So I thought, well, how hard would it be for me to design an actual plug that's going to fit the actual original and the new socket exactly the same? And I didn't think it was going to be that hard, but it's probably more complicated than I thought. So anyway, I jumped onto the uh, CAD system here, and uh, which is called Design Spark. And the first thing I thought, well, we'll model up the pin. Now these pins are the same on all of these uh, mic uh, cables that you get, apart from perhaps the six or the eight pin uh, ones. But this is the GX16 type of pin. So we've got these pins made up in CAD because everything has to center around these, and they have to the the supports have to be made so that the pin locks in place using the tab, and also sits hard against the actual case of the plug so it doesn't actually get pushed through when you pull the plug in push it push it into the socket and pull it out again so there's actually a lot more to designing plugs than I probably first thought although I, this isn't my first rodeo I have had a go at doing this with other CBs as if you've watched the channel you'll know so anyway after a little while I came up with this nice design we still kept the fanned edges like the original connector there uh, with a, a little knurled grippy piece uh, and I needed to uh, obviously secure the two halves with a screw and a nut um, so I put a, a little captive nut there in the top case part section of it and it also means that printing it this way there's no rough side only really the end of the plug there uh, which would be sitting on the the base of the printer which would probably be slightly rough um, but again not a big issue because it's going to be pushed into the socket for the most part anyway so having been comfortable with that and um, you know uh, happy with I got the design right I moved on to the actual resin side of it in the um, uh, we use the lychee slicer here and I popped six up. I figured I would do a few, keep a few spares because I, I, I ship and move a few of these radios in and out. And I th figured it would be useful just as in, it's as quick for me to do six as it is one with this uh, method of printing, which some of you might not fully understand, but that's the truth. So uh, I popped them into the printer and uh, it didn't take too long. I think it's about an hour and a half. And uh, luckily they'd all uh, printed fine. I cleaned them up and uh, I hand myself back to myself in the future. Right, and a short while later, uh, there they are. You can see how small these pieces are. We've got the, uh, the ribbed edges there to help grip the uh, grip the end of the plug. And uh, it is still a little bit. I have sprayed it with some uh, lacquer to protect it, so it's still a little bit wet, still drying. So I'll be a little bit careful. But I found a a nice screw that will go in and a little nut and these contacts should just slide in hopefully if we've done it correctly and um, yeah it should uh, make up a nice little plug I think there's the um, there's the original I haven't made it exactly as you've just watched the video haven't you it's not exactly the same but I've kind of given it a similar a similar look in terms of the the flared end uh, with the grippy side pieces so yeah, I mean, it's it's good. I mean, you know, in the absence of not having one at all, it's it's uh, it's decent. You can see I've left a little bit of a, a flashing on there to break that off. But yeah, let's um, see if we can get it offered together, clamp it up, and get some wires attached to it. And there's the pins pushed in. They've got their locked in now on their little locking tabs, and they're just recessed. Just underneath the, uh, there, so you can't touch them. Not that you're going to get a shock anyway. So that's good. So they're in just right. And I pressed the nut into the top piece. I've already tried um, offering these two together. And we've got the little locating peg at the back there. Just squeeze them together. And we should be able to pop the screw through. There we go. Fully assembled, so we've got the, the nut on that side, the screw recessed in the hole there, 
and our wires access. I suppose the test will be does it actually fit the uh, socket? We better test it on the original radio and on the new socket just to make sure it's uh, compatible with both. And there we go, that's a really snug fit. And it, there you go, give it a good tug to come out. It's got the same sort of friction as the original plug. So that's a win. So that's on the original socket. So let's try the, the new plug on my custom socket, which it should of course fit. Now we've got the pins soldered in there. And I've designed it such that it'll sit down and clamp these wires as they come through the gap. Give it a little bit of a strain protection. This is my uh, prototype. So I've got a couple of tiny little tweaks to make to it. Only ever so small. I've realized I need to make this hole slightly bigger for the nut. That's a bit too uh, snug a fit. And I'll probably put a chamfer on that little hole there. And a tiny chamfer just on the hole. Uh, but um, And I might pull these sides in just a little bit. This has only got scuff because I, I haven't waited for the lacquer to, to, uh, to dry there. And I'm also going to this end here, I'm going to put a little bit more of a radius on this end just to smooth it going in. But that's that's why we make um, make a prototype, isn't it? So, um, yeah, that's absolutely cracking. So what I'll do, so I've got this lead now uh, completed. So I've made up a lead now with a fuse carrier and um, a decent length of cord on it. And of course it works. There you go. Yeah. And uh, we've got a waggle. No problems at all. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I say the uh, I might have already done the video on the tuner for this. I can't. It depends on what all of these go out in. But um, yeah, I thought I would uh, I would do that. And then it it might be that you can use that uh, plug and socket arrangement in other sets as well. Uh, depends on the size of the cutout in the back of the CB, but um, it certainly in, is a nice solution and certainly resin printed, it's um, incredibly durable and uh, looks super spiffing. I, and I might not need to spray them, I sprayed I sprayed that with lacquer, but to be honest, just to make it all shiny really. But um, we'll see how it goes when it dries and I'll do some with a bit of spray maybe and some without and see which one I prefer, but it's certainly a good waggle of that look it's not moving in the socket it's a very snug fit so it's uh it's the this is the custom socket and the custom plug but it works equally as well in the uh, in the other set of course right i hope you've enjoyed that uh thanks ever so much for watching if you haven't already already subscribed please do it really helps me when you do that and uh keep an eye on the channel for more uh, cb and ham radio related stuff